Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to continue on today with a special selection which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today's comes at us from Lisa. Hey Brian, really love the Hella review. Definitely helped me see one of my favorite songs in a new light. Here's another request from singer-songwriter Jason Molina. He was known as a master at writing deeply sad songs with memorable lyrics, but often with a glint of hope in them. Many attributed this to his lifelong struggle with alcoholism, which took his life at the age of 39. Most of his catalog is more musically straightforward, but in the folk country rock vein, but in this album was a lot more experimental and compositionally interesting, which is why I suggest it. Thanks. So let's dive into this. The band is Songs Colon Ohio. I've had a tough time wrapping my mind around this. Not too used to too many bands or projects with a colon in them. Uh, the track we're going to be looking at today, though, is The Body Burned Away. So let's dive in. Yeah, so we have a hemiola in our first set of three with the shaker doing the two against our three and then we have a hit on four five and six with six coming in on our bass over here leading us into one really nice in that it gives us uh, quite a bit of rhythmic diversity in just this one bar idea. That's a drum of the bass guitar, isn't it? Over there on the right. had some minor variations pulling some ideas out putting some new ones in but for the most part it's just one section really impressive with the variety
very somber, melancholic. A lot of energy and forward momentum, but... Interesting decision to do straight eighth notes on the guitar there. Yeah, beautiful track. Uh, gorgeous layering, uh, harmonies, ideas, polyrhythms. It's interesting that uh, the requester had mentioned uh, that it was mostly sad songs, but that there was a glint of hope to them usually in I was trying to find it in here, and other than a little bit in the vocal work at the end of this track, it's very difficult to trace any sort of uh, positivity or hope throughout, though maybe it is just those final lines when the story dictates it, so we'll probably figure that out when we hit the lyrics. Uh, let's see, overall, what's going on here, though? So we start off with some... Really interesting rhythmic counterpoint. We have a shaker, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning. The shaker has given us a hemiola in the first grouping of three and eighth notes in the second grouping of three. I picture a lot of this song in six, eight. Uh, I was counting that out. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two. Uh, so we have uh, kind of this pulse where we have the first grouping of three and the second grouping of three, and you can kind of feel it as one, two, one, two. Uh, where one, uh, the three beats in our first group, feel very different from the three beats in our second group, which is where I introduced this concept of uh, rhythmic variety throughout this track, and it's because of this idea right here that the two halves of our phrase feel different from one another rhythmically. We have the hemiola versus the eighth notes in our shaker, but that's only where it starts. So many instruments in here tend to do different things on the first three and the second three, and that's only for the instruments that have a one bar phrase. There are some of these instruments that have larger phrases that uh, have a, a moving part through two bars or four bars. And so we have these uh, layered phrases as well, where sometimes we have these building blocks of one phrase repetitions, and then two phrase repetitions, and then, or sorry, two bar, and then four bar repetitions. And so we actually get to hear a lot of diversity in concept throughout most of this as well, because in our second bar, for a one bar idea, we're hearing the same idea, but for a two bar idea, we're hearing something new on top of that that one bar concept we've already heard before. And when we put that against the four bar concept, well, bar two is gonna be different. Okay, when we come around to bar four though, our four bar phrase is gonna be different, but our two bar is gonna be the end of its phrase. We've already heard that before. And the one bar phrase is going to be the same thing we've heard this entire time. And so we're getting all these different layers. Uh, it sort of does what canons do or poly, metric ideas do but in uh, the concept of simply phrasing 
where everybody's playing something different, they're just all in time with each other. Not a canon, not polymetric, but still a way to introduce uh, a lot of different combinations of sounds while utilizing, you know, smaller loops. Uh, not really having to constantly write new concepts for every bar that you want something new to, to be present in. And so it actually makes the song feel a lot more diverse than it is. Uh, the phrasing tends to feel longer and more linear than I think is actually going on. And honestly, you know, I've said it before, this is just smart writing right here. Um, because the end result is going to be beautiful either way. And so we have a track that ends up feeling uh, fairly linear, again, despite uh, the simplicity to it. And if we if it stopped there, I think it would still be a good song, but it tends to take it one step further and says, well, what if we slowly evolve this track? We're not just going to have three layers of varying phrasing. We're going to have eight. We're going to have nine. I don't know how many he went up to. There's a lot of layers in this track, and they all had different phrases to them, usually in uh, groupings of two, though, other than the, the one-bar phrase, um, so that there weren't any that created oddities. I don't think anything in here was at a three-bar phrase because that introduces a polymetric concept where things uh, don't line up for quite some time. Uh, I don't think we ever ran into that. But the idea of constantly adding ideas and, more importantly, removing some of the older ideas from the picture, possibly in order to give them some of the new ideas as well. I don't know if there was an instrument an instrument limitation here. I don't know if all these instruments were physically played, but there were some ideas that were removed from some instruments and the instruments came back with a different concept. And so it allows the song to progress rather naturally. Where we were at the four minute mark was very different than where we were at the beginning or even the one minute mark. Yet the general vibe was the same. Our foundation was identical. The feeling, the atmosphere was similar. But the nuances, what built this feeling up were all different. But there wasn't any moment where it was like, that's the end of the verse, here's the chorus. It was just a very natural growth and evolution from one idea to the next. And I'm a huge fan of that type of slow burn. Um, because it feels like the song is changing. And this is going to be... Uh, we're not going to get into it, because I, I could sit here and talk about this topic for a very long time. But... Basically, the difference between a traditional slow burn, which is only adding new things, and this type of slow burn, which is the replacement idea. We take old ideas out and put new ideas in. This just works better for me, and I'm going to leave it at that for right now so that this isn't a one-hour video. Um, we got to talk about, so we talk about rhythm, phrasing, uh, instrumentation. There are so many instruments in here, and a lot of it is on the percussion side, which I'm a huge fan of. There's a shaker in here. Love it. More bands need to use shakers. Let's bring shakers to metal. I'm serious. There's a lot of really cool auxiliary percussion instrument instruments that I think would work beautifully in metal tracks, and they just aren't for some reason. Shakers are one of them. Timpanis, gueros, uh, triangles. Ah, oh, man. So much good instrumentation out there that just gets ignored. Anyways, I know this isn't metal, and most of those instruments weren't in here, so let's focus on <laughs> Songs Ohio. Uh, we get the shaker, and we eventually also get a some sort of bass drum. Uh, I had it confused for a little bit, but I, it could have just been a, a, a bass drum from a, a drum kit. And a very meaty bass guitar coming together to form a massive sound. Uh, I really love this idea. It's it's pretty typical. A lot of metal does this. A lot of rock does it. You pair your bass drum with your bass guitar and you get extra punch out of it. But there's something going on here because for a, 
a couple of bars. I couldn't figure out what this instrument was. It wasn't until I started exploring the idea of compound timbre, bringing two ideas together to form a new one, that I kind of landed on the idea of uh, a bass drum and a bass guitar. But there is something going on, and I think part of it has to do with the way that the bass guitar is played. There is a bounciness to the sound. I don't know how to explain that in non-music terms. Not that that's really a great music term, but if you, if you know, you know. Sounds can be bouncy. They can have like a man, like a water drop sound to it. I, I probably is conf more confusing. And this has that. And it reminded me of a timpani because a timpani is a very bouncy uh, percussion instrument. But it was it had too much impact for a timpani, um, which was really confusing me. It, it almost had the presence of a concert bass drum but it was too bouncy for that. And I was just, I didn't know what it was. And I'm just kind of landing on a bass guitar with some other drum, but it works together so well to create this, this bounce to the music. It's a really interesting combination because so much of the music is a bit dreary. It's uh, very somber and melancholic, long held out notes, um, withdrawn, not withdrawn, a uh, sparse, rhythmic ideas uh it's it just everything kind of takes its time nothing in here is moving forward too fast and then you get these bouncy bass hits uh it's just very interesting texture to add to the song but it works i think because the bounce also provides a little bit of lethargy you get that lurch forward and then the drag back uh, and i think that's a really interesting sound to pair with this atmosphere um so yeah, we had a lot of auxiliary percussion, we had the guitars, uh, we had violin at one point, I think, and then the vocals, which the dude just has a gorgeous voice for this type of uh, emotion. Uh, it's a very emotional voice. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's just gorgeous. It's full of uh, soul and passion, and just it it cries out alongside the music here. One of those cases where the vocals was absolutely built for this type of uh, expression and for this vocalist to be tied to this music for whatever reason. Uh, just one of those cases where things just come together on the cosmic level to create some some gorgeous art. Um, I think that's about it. I mean... I don't really have much to say on the uh, atmospheric part other than the fact that it is just dreary and somber. Uh, every bit of it feels like it just wants to break down. Oh, no, one last thing. Near the end of the track, we sh we transferred out. We replaced the vocals with uh, a lead guitar line. And I thought this was interesting because where the vocals were very warm, very affectionate, uh, not affection, uh, emotive. We're just going to go back to that word, I guess. Affecting. Maybe that's what I was looking for. Um, and warm, right? Very, uh, closer to the back of the mouth type of delivery, wide sound, a bit more of a lower range. We trade that out for a guitar that moves away from lengthy lines. It moves away from uh, lower warm tones to sort of a tinny, piercing, higher tone. Um, and it gets rid of the long held out notes for just a series of these shorter eighth notes, consistent. Whereas the vocals tended to have a bit of rhythmic variety to them, these are just constant eighth notes. It's an interesting decision. I'm not 100% sure what went into it. I don't quite know how to read it, especially since not long after this, we begin to subtract instruments out and bring it back down to where we were at at the beginning, giving us a nice bell curve of intensity and release for the track. I'm sure it represents something to the band. 
I don't know what it is though. It's a very interesting choice to give them the lead melody to that instrument and have it do what it does in stark contrast to what we had been doing for a hundred percent of the track up until that point. Maybe the lyrics will give me a little bit of insight into that, but it's an odd choice. Speaking of the lyrics, let's get into it. It seems to be a meditation on the process of death. It says, death, death as it shook you, you gave it a fool's look. You said, I'm an empty page to you. Give me your hand. Give me your blood. And I like this, this opening line. The, uh, the fool's look, I believe, is a concept of shock, of misunderstand not misunderstanding but a lack of understanding confusion maybe even you know the idea that death shook you as if to shook you awake right as as you die your eyes close and you you know you go into the eternal slumber kind of idea and then you get woken up by death and he shakes you awake and you're like oh, oh who are you what's going on here right you have this fool's look like, oh. um i like that idea I think it's a very interesting way to, to go about envisioning this concept. Verse 2 goes into the idea of the passing. It says, Don't misunderstand, I once had all the words, but I forgot them. So I held the binding lightning and began to burn away. I'm not 100% sure what this means, particularly as a metaphor, but the concept I get from this is the pass, the, the passing on from one state to the next. Um, the binding lightning could be the flash, the flash from life to death. It's, you know, it's a brief moment. One second you're alive, the next you're not. Um, and then the binding idea, as uh, Sonic Hits details, could be alluding to uh, the idea that we're bound to this experience. All of us as humans, none of us are immortal, that we know of anyways. Um, and so it's, it's a lightning, it's a flash that brings us all together, equalizes all of our lives, um, and showcases that we'll all eventually have to do do this and deal with this experience and says through this I began to burn away and then that's our chorus as we finish the track out the body burns away and it could just be about again this idea of death the experience of death the transition to death and possibly the decay of the physical body so yeah the somber uh, atmosphere I think works really well for this being that it is about dying uh, and some of the fear and uncertainty that comes with that but lyrically at least there there seems to be a, a comfort in the lyrics that I don't know I 100% felt in the music but I did mention that there's a little bit of a, a hope there at the end in some of the final lines So it's possible it was there and I just wasn't picking up on it yet. But yeah, there, there's a there's a piece in the lyrics, a uh, uh, release of stress, kind of. Anyways, those are my thoughts on Songs Ohio's The Body Burned Away. This is where y'all come in. Let me know in the comments what you thought of this track, your opinions, perspectives, and thoughts. Put it all in the comments section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you to this menu. You can find my music, ways to support the channel, links to the Discord server, and just a ton of other stuff. Go ahead and check it out. Lots of great stuff in there. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three. Uh, we have a special selection coming up next. You can check that out. I think it's going to be interesting. I don't know what it is. Oh, no, this is... Oh, my... Geez. How do I keep doing this? I did this yesterday, too. I think I'm just losing track of time. This is today's special selection. I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 p.m. UTC. We're going to continue on with 
outsider music, which has been uh, a difficult theme for me, <laughs> really pushing my boundaries uh, of my ability to analyze music on a first listen. Anyways, that's tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I think I already said that. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos. Thank you.